Hey guys, I'm Joanna. Now, it's been a long time since I filmed a video, a year and a half ago, and at the time I was training to be a teacher. I was doing my PGD, which is your initial teacher training, and I was doing that in Scotland. I did my PGD at the University of Aberdeen, so I thought it'd be helpful to make a video talking to people that might want to get into teaching and might want to get into teaching in Scotland specifically long time since I last made a video and the videos that I had made were a bit cringy. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I've actually made them public again just so that people can go back and see if you want to. When I decided to get into teacher training it was 2020. We all know what that means. In the March when Covid all started happening I knew what I wanted to do roughly. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to get into charity work or get into education. I was planning to go away abroad and teach sexual health education. With Covid, that all fell through. I was using that to decide what I wanted to do with my career. I started working customer service. I knew that I liked teaching kids. I had volunteered to teach SHRE, which is sexual health relationship education. I had been teaching this throughout my whole university career. So I thought, naturally, let's go and be a teacher. <laughs> Why would I want to study in Scotland? I'm clearly English. I had applied to some English universities to do a PGC, but in England you do your ITE, however you do it, you have two years of being an ECT teacher, an early careers teacher, like a two year long rationary period. When I looked into Scotland, I have done my undergraduate degree in Scotland at the University of St Andrews. That's where I met my now fiance. That's another big update since my last video. At the time we were in a new relationship and I had said since pretty much day one that I was willing to move back up to Scotland. It's natural for me to want to look at Scottish teacher training. I had to go through a university to do it. I had an offer from Durham that I was looking to accept. Um, but I actually turned that down because my interview with Durham, they knew nothing about me. They hadn't read my personal statement and I don't, I didn't feel like they were particularly warm. They didn't give a very positive vibe, but the vibe that Aberdeen gave off was so friendly and so eager that I was like yep I'm coming here so I decided that's easy I'm going to go to Aberdeen. The benefit of going to a PGD in Scotland you have university support and you have a probation year similar to the ECT year in England but it's one year and you get given your probationary school. That's so much easier it's so much more streamlined. That's the first step to figure out whether you want to do a skit, whether you want to do a PGCE, whether you want to do a PGDE. In England as well, you have a PGDE, but it's not the same as a Scottish PDE. PGDE, too many acronyms. A PGD in Scotland, it's just the equivalent of a PGC. I went to Aberdeen for the first, like, 16 weeks. It was all online teaching. To be honest, I didn't get anything out of the online learning. I didn't get any ideas about how to lesson plan which is crucial to be a teacher. Every day your lectures would be on certain subjects. You'd look at the curriculum in most of your lessons and find out how the curriculum works. That was the foundation of the first like 16 weeks before we went into school. The curriculum for excellence, which is, so they used to have the five to 14 and they scrapped that and got the curriculum for excellence, which is based on four principles, <sighs> responsible citizens, effective contributors and something else. Anyway, there are four principles and the curriculum is based on those. And you have your E's and O's. Your E's and O's are your experiences and outcomes. E's and O's are things that you need to cover. Lesson might be based on one E and O or a couple of E's and O's. And you have different levels that follows right through from nursery until the time they start, until they go to the academy and then about to pick their hires. That's another thing is that if you're going to do <laughs> teacher training in a different country you'll be following a different curriculum. You get allocated to school, you put in where you live and if you drive in Aberdeen you could get placed up to two and a half hours away. I got placed in Peter Heat. Peter Heat from Peter Heat is Deed. At the time didn't drive. I was learning to drive but I didn't drive then. I had to get a bus every day. The bus took about an hour and a half. 
I had to get up at 5am. I think that placement was only eight weeks long, which feels really short, especially when you are a teacher. You find out what class you're going to have, but you don't know anything until you go in on the day. It's a progressive amount of input that you do. The first week, you just get to know the kids in the classroom. The most important thing is building relationships with the, with the class. That's where all of your behaviour management comes from. Each week is progressive, so you will then teach two literacy lessons and then three maths lessons and, and then it would be a mix so it'd be like you have to do two half days so that was until lunchtime or after lunchtime two half days three half days and then a full day until the point where you were teaching in our first placement I think it was three full days in our first place we had to do an assignment we observed a pupil in the classroom we had to choose an area that we want to observe a pupil on specifically i chose a child he was dyslexic it was how i could ascertain information from this child where he is where he needs to go and the barriers that are in his way and how i can help him overcome them. By the time the second placement rolled around we were going to do a small scale research inquiry. Before we went into the second placement we had to do a literature review to find out what are the gaps in li literature and what did we think would be a good inquiry to improve our own practice. So I chose differentiation. That's like one of the hardest things for every teacher is, is being able to create work and to teach at each child's level of learning. It's so hard. In Scotland, you have something called GERFEC. Which get it right for every child. Tailor everything that you teach according to their level of need. I chose that as the area that I want to develop. I had researched this teaching practice. You put children into a mixed ability grouping and you give each of them different roles. Kind of like reciprocal reading, you can have children be one person be the note taker, one be the uh, researcher will be the communicator. I think it's called their STIP method. You have different people that are all in different levels and they all have different roles but they all scaffold each other to get the job done and I wanted to do it in a P12 class. I wanted to use my P2s as to support the P1s just to create a poster on the book that they've just read. This was Rake. I had to research this, write a report and a proposal. My first placement was an upper stages placement. P4 to P7. It's like year three to year six. I had a P5-6 class and they were a really nice class. There were, there were definitely some challenges. There were definitely some low lows, but there were also some really, really core cool moments that gave me insight into teaching. My second placement was my lower years and I got a P1-2 class. And oh, when I say that they were the dream, they were the absolute dream. It, they were a class that made me think teaching is for me. I could have taught that class for the rest of my life. Each placement, you have a mentor and the mentor is the class teacher. They should be helping you to plan, especially in your first placement when you're brand new into it. That mentor is the person who's ultimately going to be giving you a pass or fail at the end of your teaching placement. So it's really important to communicate with them from day one. It's not just the teacher that is going to pass or fail you. You had an observer from the university come out to assess a, a lesson that you were teaching. So the person that was coming to assess me, she got COVID and she ended up coming week before Christmas. Luckily I passed and my mentor passed me as well. So you have to pass your observation from the university lecturer and you also have to pass your school report from your mentor. How they base pass or failing you is based on the criteria that the Scottish Government have laid out. To be a full teacher, you have to meet the full standards for registration. But as a student teacher, you have the provisional standards for registration. It's about being a teacher, your knowledge and your actual practice. You have to evidence every single one of those points. One, you'd have 1.1, 1 .1, 1 .1 1 .1. <laughs> Your teacher needs to tick you off to make sure that you are hitting the, the SPR, the standards, and then the and then lecturer or the university staff member. If you pass both, then you're through and you then move on to your probation year. If you failed your first one, it doesn't matter as long as you pass your second one. If you've passed your first one and you fail your second one, you had to do a recovery placement, which is after the university term's finished, after your PTDE year, you go into a probation year. If you're in that position where you get placed in a school where you're really struggling, you need to speak out to head teacher, speak to friends, the university. And when you pass all that, you can put in, you've got a preference box of five places. And you can list each council area that you would want to be placed in from your first preference. I chose Dumfries and Galloway because that's where my partner Luke is living. I have actually 
uh, left my probation year. Probably a video for another day. <laughs> it wasn't because I was failing or I got a bad report or anything. Now I am actually doing supply teaching at the minute. That's probably another video that I can also talk about. It's advice. Befriend or create a positive working relationship with your mentor as soon as you can. That person is the person that's ultimately going to pass or fail you, but they're also your support. A second bit of advice would be be prepared. I have a to-do list every single day of things I had to get done. I had to set reminders on my phone for bigger pieces of work. There was so much paperwork. In your PTDE, you've got a ridiculous amount of work to do. It's not academically challenging, but it is very workload heavy. You have to teach, plan, assess, and mark all this admin and university stuff, reports to write, you've assessments, you've got to do research inquiry in your class while you're teaching and you have to reflect every day or every week. It's crazy. You need to set boundaries as well. You need to say, this is my time. I'm going to have some fun. I'm not going to do any work today. Put the kids first always. Build relationships with the children. They're the ones that you're teaching. Lots of these children have personal things going on as well. You might not know that as a student teacher. Get to know the kids and make sure that they trust you from day one. And don't be afraid to be yourself with the kids as well. They can pick up if you're nervous before doing a lesson. They know that. They know. Don't be too silly. <laughs> Sometimes when they're, they're so young, they get carried away with the silliness. And the biggest advice is that you will learn on the job. You will not get told enough information. You will not get told how to lesson plan enough. You will not get told the best ways to behave and manage. I paid a lot of money to do that and I learned nothing from the university, really. I only learned by doing the job. If any of these advice tidbits have been helpful for you, let me know. Give the video a like because that'd be really helpful. I'm also doing videos on TikTok as well. I'm doing day in the life videos of a supply teacher. I'll have that in all in the description. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all very soon.